<laughs> hey guys, over here. I always do these weird things to get myself ready to record. I'm ready now. Okay, uh, today we are sharing our lighting setup, my number one go-to lighting setup. Now what's funny about this is I've tried more expensive gear, I've tried larger gear, tougher gear, and I always keep coming back to my original budget setup. And the reason is it's most convenient. It's quick to move around, it's light, it breaks down to a tiny, here it is right here. Look at it, look at it. This is, this is it right here. And people always ask me what lighting setup is that, what lighting setup is. I'm almost embarrassed to share the lighting setup because it's so uh, budget and cheap. So in this video, I'll just show you the setup and some examples, and then I'm gonna make a second video right after this, uh, showing you some alternatives and also some other things I use uh, and why I keep coming back to this. Okay, number one is my, by the way, this video is not sponsored by anyone. I bought all this stuff for myself <laughs> with my own money. You know, you watch a lot of videos, you never know. You gotta check the fine print. Did someone pay them to make that video? No one's paying me to make my video. This is the stuff I own and use for my professional work. All right, with that disclaimer said, my number one company for light stands, I don't skimp on light stands. I've gotten cheapy light stands, which you'll see in the next video, but I love Manfrotto light stands. And my favorite Manfrotto light stand is this 5001B. And accept no imitations, because I've tried. <laughs> this guy is the best little tiny light stand. All right, part two of it is a traditional umbrella bracket, also by Manfrotto, because it's made of metal. I've tried the plastic ones. Three is a speed light. I happen to be using the Flashpoint Zoom. Uh, there's a bunch of different speed lights, but a speed light and something to trigger the speed light. And the last part of the equation is the most embarrassing. It's El Cheapo Newer 47 inch umbrella softbox, not sponsored by again and they are actually are kind of flimsy, <laughs> which is why it's embarrassing. Like they start to come apart here. You see these little dudes right here? These are great because this, so small to break down and they set up really quickly. Uh, and just as an aside, the kind of photography I do is run and gun slash event photography. I usually need to do a portrait in about five to 10 minutes. Also traveling light in some of these venues is great. So anyway, let me open it up for you. See how easy it is? <laughs> it's kind of ready to go with the cover on there, okay, for diffusion. So the way this guy works, it's a silver inside. You put your bracket on, the light will bounce into the umbrella, fill up the umbrella, and then bounce through the diffusion. Now the reason I like these guys, uh, I'll tell you the negatives in a, in a second. Number one, when you put the cover on, it's got a little bit of a lip. Look at that, look at that cheap thing. I cannot recommend these enough. <laughs> and the thing I like about it, it's got a little bit of a lip here. So when you put the cover on there, the cover is not right on the edge. If a cover was right on the edge, it would make the light go kind of everywhere. And this little lip right here at least keeps some of the light going forward, which is cool. Without using a grid, these guys come with, uh, sorry, these guys do not come with grids. And the grids are pretty poor anyway, quality, they, they tend to break apart. Uh, and it's also something else to worry about. So I usually stay away from the grids, even though using grids is really cool. Uh, I try to feather my light. So in this photograph here of the woman in the green dress, this is using this guy, completely feathered off to the side, beautiful soft light. Now this setup is great for indoor photography. Uh, and the reason I use the speed light is because the speed light power can go down low enough if you wanna shoot indoors. Okay, so this guy's great indoors. Outdoors, you usually want a lot more power from your flash, so you're not gonna use this little guy. And this guy probably won't be great outside with the wind and all that stuff. Okay, let's put some cool music here. All right, here's why I love this light stand. Whoa, check out that cool design. It's like in your face. And the thing I love about this Manfrotto uh, light stand, this 5001B, is that you can either have it very spread out like this, which gives you more support and more balance, or sometimes I gotta get through a little aisle or a pew or something, and you can sort of rock this guy tall like this. Now this is not stable at all, but because the light setup is so light, 
This guy, just about like this, can fit in weird little corners. You tighten it, weird little corners, and if you needed to, you could put your camera bag on it to keep it a little sturdier, but the footprint is tiny to go through, you know, like aisles, and when I did my movie theater shoot, this guy fit right between the aisle. This was the only light stand I could use there without having, I was by myself. Um, no one had to hold my light. This little guy was on the aisle, so that's cool. The leg design, I love. And if you wanted to, you could have it completely flat on the ground with sandbags on. I don't know why you would want that, but maybe you have to stick it under things. I'll show you how tall this gets. Let me change my angle. All right, let's set this guy up. But first, let me show you how tall this guy gets, which is awesome. I am about six foot two-ish with boots on. And this guy is a seven foot. Look at that, seven feet. Okay, so the flash head is on there, on that guy, and I extend the first, the top one. And the reason is, this dude right here, he's got a little... Put the umbrella bracket on there, just like so, and we'll raise this guy. Now, here's the number one negative that these guys, besides being cheap, look at this little thing sticking out. It's all right, no one's gonna notice that in the light. The number one thing is this little slit right here prevents this from leaning down. So if you wanted to use this flash facing down a bit more, uh, that might be a problem for you. For me, it's not a problem at all because I always use this guy straight. All right, so this is why I extend the first one. I extend the first one because it, if I need the light to go the tallest, I don't have to go in this umbrella anymore. Uh, that one's always extended, the first one. And that means I can close this and I can run around with it now. Like I told you, I run around with it <laughs> and try to get as many looks as possible. Now, the best thing is this guy is super light. So if you're weak and feeble like me, this is great. When most photographers, including me, when I first started out, I would point my light at people like this, <laughs> okay? And then as you get better, you learn that you might want to feather the light. So if, if I was photographing you, you would probably see the light like this on you. And the light would sort of just like wash, over, wash all over your face. Um, and it gives you like nice, beautiful, soft light as opposed to pointing your light at someone. It's a little harsher. So this is how big it looks if you're holding the whole thing. And remember, there's a speed light on there and I, weak and feeble, am totally holding it with one hand. Um, this thing has fallen over sometimes and it's not gonna crash and kill someone. Uh, so that's always good. But the best thing is that it is super, super light. You can plop it anywhere. Um, I'll show you those legs, like we said before. Let's make the legs really, really skinny so you could see that, the tall legs. Whippa! Can you see that? See the little skinny legs there? So uh, not super stable, but you can put a camera bag on there. I've used this lighting setup before in a couple of other videos. We did a shoot with Valentina, if you remember. We did a, a workout shoot with her. And that was this lighting setup. I also use this guy as kind of a hair light sometimes when I'm using my big mama, big monster. This guy is my hair light in the background because I can use it as a hair light, but if I need to grab it and run somewhere where there's no space, I have a light that's big enough, uh, which I enjoy. Ah, so what do you think? Cool, right? So you can get professional results from super budget embarrassing gear that works. Oh, be sure to tune in to part two if you want to see more of this uh, kind of lighting stuff. All right, let me know if you like that. See ya.